This is um, upper sixth biology. So my students have got roughly 11 weeks until their exam. So they're slightly panicking. So yeah, this is like that final topic area. Um, the class is a big class, around about 24 students, although quite a few will be out on trips today. So it's going to be from topic eight, which is the final topic um, of their specification. And the topic area is going to be on gene probes and genetic screening. But we will need to do a little bit of um, a technique called gel electrophoresis so that they can understand that. I will be talking them through the procedures of the different techniques that we're doing. Um, they will do a couple of um, possibly whiteboard activities that come off from the board. Um, and then because it's 11 weeks of the exam, we're quite exam focused at the moment, I will be showing them some exam questions from our booklets and we will have, we'll be having a go at those as well if you have a chance. So. Last lesson we did PCR. Um, so polymerase chain reaction and quite a lot of these technologies they've done recently we've been to a genetics workshop uh, last week so quite a lot of these technologies they did then so I'll be pulling on some of their knowledge from all those areas as well yeah so that we, we if we have one that's radio we're nearly there if you have one so let's say that the, the that, that one is radioactive and the green one isn't Right, so this one is, that one isn't radioactive, that one is radioactive. If we have the one that's, the from, if they rejoin from the same species where they're both radioactive, what would the percentage of radioactivity be? It would be 100% on this scenario. If it's this species with no radioactivity, we'd have no radioactivity. So we would look for the DNA sample that's got 50% radioactivity because we would know that's the one with the hybrid bit of DNA, yeah? So this is very closely linked. Although it's an AS topic, it may well come in in this scenario on an A2 thing. So gene probes is very much linked to that. So a gene probe, what it is it, is a single-stranded piece of DNA that is complementary to the mutated gene that we're looking for, okay? So it's complementary. So therefore, this gene probe, in order to make this gene probe, we have to know what the genetic code is of the mutated allele for it to bind by a complementary base pairing. And also, the probe in question has to be single-stranded. And the gene that we're looking for in this patient has to be single-stranded for them to bind. And the probe itself is either made radioactive or probably nowadays it's attached with some sort of fluorescent marker that when we shine a UV light on it, it will glow and give us that response. If that's attached to the DNA strand, hmm? then how does the DNA strand attach to it? Which other one? If they're pairing up, like yeah. the yeah. green, yeah. but the blue one's already got a probe attached to part of it, yeah. how does the blue and the green join together? Well, in this scenario, that's what I'll, if I talk you through it, hopefully you'll see as we go through those steps. Okay? All right, so this is the principle behind a gene probe. It's this single-stranded piece of DNA that is complementary. So we have to make it from the mutated gene in question. It's not enough that we just have one probe that's able to bind to that mutated piece of DNA if we want to be able to detect it. We've got to have lots of them. So therefore, if we look down here... We do PCR to make lots of copy, which is what we did last lesson.